Hello friends, my name is Sarah. I'm the artist and maker behind Denim and Rain. Welcome to my YouTube channel. So today is a projects video. I have all the things to share with you, but first I want to say thank you. Oh, oh my goodness. Uh, I'm really bad at this. Like I don't, I'm really bad at expressing how I feel about things. Um, but I'm blown away by a thousand subscribers. That seems pretty crazy to me. It happened really quickly. I went from 800 last video, like saying, oh my gosh, thank you for 800. And then bam, like two days later, it was at a thousand. It was like, whoa, that's crazy. Um, so yes, thank you for that. Um, if you aren't already hit that like and subscribe, it's amazing. It's very encouraging. It makes me want to make more videos for you all. Um, also, if you feel like it, you could buy me a cup of tea. I've got my Ko-Fi link down below. I don't drink coffee. It's not really my thing. Um, but yeah, you can find all the links to all the other things as well down below on my website, my Instagram, etc. along with all the patterns I talk about and the yarns will all be listed in the description box for you. And since I have hit a thousand subscribers, I thought it'd be fun to do a little question and answers video. I've already asked this over on Instagram and then I put a little conversation thingy post here on YouTube. Um, feel free to comment on that if you have any questions or down in the comments below. Feel free to ask me anything. Do you have any knitting or crochet questions? Do you have any tools involving knitting and crochet? Do you have any art questions, planty questions, life questions, whatever? Drop them down in the comments below. I'd love to answer those in another video. So if you've been here before, you probably are like, you're in a new location, where are you? Um, I'm actually in my bedroom because it's, we finally got some summer in the Pacific Northwest. It has been disgusting and rainy and cloudy and everybody's like, oh, it's hundreds of degrees. And meanwhile, we're here like still wearing sweaters and things, which I'm, I mean, I like wearing sweaters, but kind of need some sunshine. Well, we finally got sunshine and heat and so, I've got fans going throughout my house to keep it cool in here and I didn't want to go around turning off all the fans so I just came into my bedroom where it's quiet to record. Um, so yeah, but projects. I have some goodies to share. I've got a finished pair of socks. So these are my flan curtain, flan curtain socks. Uh, of course is a office reference. Um, so these are my this is my sock pattern. The yarn is kind of dark, so. Um, this is my hand dyed yarn, Pacific Kiss, or Pacific Blush, I can never remember. I think it's Pacific Kiss. Um, this is a plucky knitter, one, one of a kind colorway. It is a 90% um, merino, 10% nylon base, and yeah, it's a DK worsted sock. I. To me, DK and worsted weight socks are kind of interchangeable. You just need to check your gauge. Um, so yeah, I still have my, I still have my narwhal hanging out on it. I don't know why I haven't taken them off. Um, they're sitting on blockers. I don't actually block my socks. I just, I don't. <laughs> because they go right on my feet and then they get washed and my socks go in the washer and the dryer. I don't, I don't princess my knits, guys. I don't, I don't. Especially the socks. Like, it really, they're just socks. If they wear out, they wear out, I'll knit another pair. It's not the end of the world. It's not like a sweater, which even then, like, if it's got a synthetic or it's a superwash, it, it goes in the washer and the dryer. Don't hate me, guys. Don't hate me. Does anybody else do it? Is anybody else not princessy about their knits. I just, I'm not. Um, yeah, so there's, there's my socks. Um, I just need to take the stitch markers off of them and put them in my drawer. I've woven in all of the ends to both. Imagine that. It's a thing that you do. Um, so yeah, blonde curtain socks, done. Also, I should probably mention what I'm wearing, I guess. So I'll pop a video on screen now so you can see it a little bit better because, you know, sitting down and it's a tank top and it's kind of hard to see. Um, so this is a Remy camisole by Kadri. I was a test knitter for this one and I loved it. It's so good. I probably want to make another one of these. I have some other things. Of course I want to knit first, but it's such a good pattern. It will be made again. I am a little weird about like sweaters. Like I don't like to make the same sweater pattern 
over and over again but for some reason summer things I don't mind having multiples of the same thing just like in different colors like I have a couple of the same tank tops from just a big box store same one just in different colors and I love that but I don't like to do that with other items like t-shirts and long sleeves I don't know it's a thing a little crazy but anyways let's move on to the next finished thing that I'm so excited about I will be ready for my next finished my next finished item I am. Bam. I finished my Antuva sweater. So this one is by Ronya. Ronya. Um, I'm not going to try and pronounce her last name because I always butcher it and I feel really bad about butchering it. Um, but oh my goodness. Look at the color work on this. It's so beautiful. Oh, and look at the sleeve. So the sleeve doesn't actually have color work on it. I added the color work because I have this weird thing about like things being balanced and when there's color work at the top of a yoke and then nothing at the bottom it just feels unbalanced to me like there's no color work at the bottom of the body which that doesn't bother me but there just needs to be something near the bottom so that's why I did the sleeves I did send her a message like I had talked about in my last video asking her since the test in it making sure she was okay that I added color work to it or she wanted me to keep it exactly the same and she's like go ahead so I added color work to the end and I love it so much um, and then I added a sewn hey man focus a sewn like weird loop-de-loop -loop there indicating which side it's back because as I've talked about in the past I don't like tags they're itchy and they're scratchy but I like things that have a front and a back and of course this has short rows in the back so it has a back so rather than sewing in a tag that will drive me bonkers I've done that. Um, I do have tags so from Shelly Can. Um, so I don't know. Actually, I should have done that. Um, I've done in the sweaters before where I put them on the inside of the back, like down here. I mean, you don't really need to see where I'd put it, but I put it like down in the back in the bottom. So that way it's like against my pants rather than up against my skin where I'm really sensitive. So, um, but anyways, the pattern is beautiful. I don't know if there's a release date yet. I have a couple of days for the test knit left still. So I'm going to take some photos and write up my notes for her. Um, yeah. So my notes are pretty minimal. It was fairly simple. I mean, it assumes you know how to knit a sweater. It's not going to hold your hand. Um, it's got a chart, which I primarily knit off the chart. It was a beautiful chart. So beautiful. I mean, oh, look at how beautiful that is. Um, so I did make a couple of mistakes in here. So there's three of this guy there and I like missed one of them there. I put too many rows in between there. Um, and then I started on the body. There should have been some other, one more round of color work, just some like little lines and stuff down here. But I started on, like there's supposed to be a couple of rows of this. So I did those couple of rows and then just got excited and started knitting the body. Um, I had considered going back and duplicate stitching those in, but let's be real. I'm way too lazy for that. That's that not gonna happen. Um, so yeah, oh, it is so fabulous. I was a little worried about the fit before I blocked it. It was very bunchy and up in my business and making me kind of claustrophobic. And the sleeves weren't quite as long as I wanted them, which I was like, whatever. But I was like, this may end up being somebody else's sweater. Like I might gift it to somebody because I didn't. Mm. It was, I'm pretty sure, okay, so I cast on for the extra small, but I think I ended up accidentally increasing, I wasn't paying attention, that ended up increasing to the small size, um, which I think is probably good that I did that. Um, I was supposed to te the, test the extra small, like I said, I cast on that many stitches, um, but then, I don't know, I wasn't paying attention, I was just going for it. Um, so this is the small size, but yeah, and when I was knitting that, I was like, oh, maybe I should have done the medium even, but I blocked it and it fits beautifully. It fits beautifully. Um, so yeah, um, you know, let's, let's just show you it on. Oh, isn't it so pretty? I love the way it fits on the neck. It's like so smooth. That color work was 
crazy ripply, but now it's not. It's really nice. So, you know, it's it's good. I'm I'm very happy with it. I think the fit is nice. The color work is beautiful. It's definitely a sweater. I'm going to get tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of wear out of this this fall. It's gonna yeah, it's gonna get lots of love this sweater. So anyways, my Antuva is finished. Um, I will keep you updated on when the pattern is released. I know probably a lot of you aren't thinking big, you know, color work sweaters at this point in time of summer, but you know, I now have a sweater ready for me in fall, which I love. I knit sweaters year round, um, but yeah, in love. All right, let's move on to what I've been working on. So once I bound off on my Flonkerton socks, I like immediately cast on another pair of socks because I was like, I need some socks. I usually sock knit when we're going places and we had a lot of places go that weekend. So I was like, I need to cast on some socks. So I did. And I finished the first one. So this is retro 80s inspired tube sock. Um, my mom saw it and I was like, so it's kind of 80s inspired. She's like, oh yeah, tube socks. Um, she's like, I knew this kid who used to wear mismatched tube socks. So, you know, that's what we're doing here. So these already have a name, a pattern name. These are going to be the Hawkins socks because, you know, I've been watching Stranger Things. And of course, set in the 80s, it just fits so perfect. So it's like a ribbed down here, a few rows, and then we've got a nice little heel. And then they typically, like all the tube socks I've seen, have the stripes they don't have a colored toe but you know that whole balance thing i was just talking about i can't have color up here and then nothing down here it would drive me crazy so i added color to the toe um like i'll, I'll write it up in the pattern that you don't need to put color on the toe if you want it to be more of a classic look where it's white all the way but for me there needs to be something at the end so color at the end um yeah, I'm really excited about these. I've only done the one. I haven't cast on the second one yet, but I probably will this week. Yeah, I'm really in love with these. I've got a million color combos that I want to do. I think the next one, I'm going to, I don't know if I'm going to cast on the next one identical to this or if I'm going to cast on the next color. I can't decide. I might just cast on the next color then I might not come back to this. So I probably should just cast on this one, but it's got a really long leg. Like this is a, real, a lot of, it was a lot of ribbing, but I didn't really notice cause it's three by one, which I don't know why, but three by one is less irritating than two by two or one by one. Don't know why, who knows? The logic doesn't make sense, but bam, Hawkins socks. Can't wait for these. I'm gonna start working on the pattern here soon so I can write it up and get it into testing so you guys can make your own 80s inspired socks. All right, so you remember how last week or the last video I was talking about how once I was done with certain projects, I was going to just work on that cotton blanket of mine. I haven't touched it. I set aside my classic sweater. It is in a bag, chilling out for now. I might take it on vacation with me um, at the end of July. But for now, I think I'm just gonna leave it be. Um, and then I finished those, that pair of socks. I finished my Antuva. Um, so I basically have the Hawkins socks then. That's it, and that blanket, but I decided not feeling the blanket, not feeling the garter stitch flat forever. I don't know, just not feeling it. So oh, I cast on something else. Um, I cast this on just a couple of days ago and yeah, we we're, we're making headway. Um, so this is going to be a summer sweater. <laughs> this is knit out of my wool and the gang denim yarn. This is, if you watched my yarn haul video, I reclaimed this yarn from a crochet sweater that I had made. It is a beautiful reclaimed cotton denim yarn. It is beautiful. Also on here I have my, it's flipped, um, my beach umbrella stitch marker. Look at the stitch marker, not my fingers. Isn't it so cute? I do still have a few of these left in my shop and then it comes with some 
other colored accent markers. Um, so yeah, I started knitting on this. I'm kind of, I'm winging it. I'm making up my own pattern here. Um, I want something for summer that I can throw on over like whatever tank top I'm wearing. So it's very, it's a very loose gauge. <laughs> Hi, you can see me there. Um, yeah, I am gonna have, to, I, this was like so fast, you guys. I did, on the back panel, I did from here to there in one day. And then from there to the bottom of here, one full side and to there on the other side in one day. And then this morning I knit from there to there and join the two. But I'm gonna frog the front. Let me show you why. Okay, so I want it big and loose and drapey and like, you know, I don't care what type of sweater, but it's a little too broad in this area. It's a little too wide on the shoulders. So I think I'm going to, um, I'm frogging back to here and then I'm going to pick up some more stitches here and then I'm gonna decrease at the same rate, but then I'm gonna stop short and then cast on stitches and have more of a, it's not a scoop, but it's not a crew and it's not a boat. Uh, a, a high scoop, I don't know. So I just, I want it to like cover, I want it to be like here is what I want it. So it, I'm not like, angry that I have to frog back because I mean obviously oops I'm stuck obviously this has flown because I am it's a worsted weight yarn it says it has it categorized as an Aran but to me oh, I'm trying to grab the yarn to me this looks a little more A little more worsted than Erin. So it's a worsted and I'm knitting it on six millimeter needles which is a US 10. Um, yeah it's it's flying so I'm not upset that I need to frog the two front panels because yeah if I do that tonight I'll be able to if I frog back this afternoon Tonight, I'll be able to probably knit both of those just sitting and watching TV with my husband. So, yeah, I, I'm excited about this project. It wasn't something I was really planning on casting on, but I just kept looking at this yarn, and I really like this denim yarn. I know a lot of people don't like cotton. I don't mind cotton so much, um, but I just, I really wanted to reuse the yarn again because, like, the whole point of this, like, yarn is to reclaim it and reuse it and give it life and I hate it that I had this yarn just like sitting in a drawer and then I frogged it and then it's just sitting in a cupboard so here we are I'm knitting a sweater now which was not my plan but whatever the yarn is living in my ceramic bowl made by my sister at Pennington Designs I love it she doesn't currently have any yarn bowls but maybe someday in the future she'll um, make more of them for us knitters. But yeah, I love this bowl. So yeah. Okay, so knitting plans. I have a couple of different things. So first is Kadri. Uh, I'm testing, I'm gonna test another pattern for her. I haven't gotten the details yet, so I don't really know exactly what weight the pattern is. It looks like it's maybe a DK weight. Um, and then I don't know how much yardage it is or if we need to use the same yarn that she used. Who knows? I don't know yet. I know I'm testing. She already asked me if I would. I'm excited. Of course I said yes. Um, so I'm testing the Soho top for her. It uses a Pearl Soho yarn. I don't remember which one, but I think it's held double. It has the Pearl Soho yarn that she's using. It has a couple of different weights, so I'm not really sure which one it is. That's why I don't know what weight it is. Um, but I do have some of this Lion Bren. It's their cotton bamboo. I don't remember the name of it. This is stuff, this is some that I frogged from something else. Can you tell there's a theme of me knitting things from things I frogged? I'm trying to use uh, all the yarns that I have, people. Um, so if I have to buy yarn, if I have to use the same yarn that she used, then it's fine. I'll buy it because, I mean, I don't want to, but I will. But 
usually she doesn't usually there hasn't been a requirement to use the same yarn um, so I'm hoping I can use this because it's really nice um, it's a nice pink I'm not usually a huge pink person but this pink isn't too bad um, and I want to use it so hoping to use this for that and then and then oh my lord you guys I don't even know okay so last year I I fell in love with the chemical number five by my favorite things knitwear. I think it's the number five, the high neck one. Um, but I, I ended up not knitting it because I don't really like high like neck things that much. But since I've gotten my hair cut short, the high neck turtle like necks and just the tank tops, the high necks and like the slightly cut in looks so good with the short hair. So. When I got it cut super short again and I found the turtleneck th or the high neck tank top I bought from the store, I was like, I want to knit it. I'm going to do it. So I bought the pattern a few months ago and then all of a sudden the pattern has blown up and everybody and their mother is knitting this camisole by My Favorite Things Knitwear. What's the big deal, Sarah? I just knit it. I know. I know. I just don't like doing what everybody else is doing. It bothers me. I hate, like, I don't... I, if you like to knit things that everybody else is knitting, this is no shame. Like, you do that. But for some reason, I just, I get very stuck in, I don't, like, people get stuck in trends. I hate trends. I hate trends. I hate trends because then everybody's doing it. And I don't want to be like everybody else. I don't want to make the same thing or wear the same thing or do the same thing that everybody else is doing. So I'm sitting here seeing that tank top and, like, really want it. But everybody else is making it, so I don't want to do it. But I'm telling myself, Sarah, quit being stupid. Just knit it. You want it. You love it. You know you wear it. You have the yarn for it. So just knit it. So I have this cotton merino that I bought from Hobie, which was the plan to use that for. Ugh. So <laughs> I'm going to make one. I'm not happy about that. It's, I'm not happy that's popular and everybody else is making it because... I don't want everybody to think that I'm following the trends. Oh, look, there's another person knitting a camisole number five. That's not why I'm making it. That's not why I'm making it. I've made it. I wanted to make it because I really like high neck things. And there's not very many out there, surprisingly. Not ones that are done well and that look really good. So, yeah, there's a little bit of, there's just a little insight to my crazy. <laughs> So anyways, enough of me being crazy. Um, those are my plans for the future. Um, yeah, um, once I get the information on the one on the Soho for Kadri, I'll probably start that. I think she says she's gonna get information out to us this week. So I don't know if the test is going to start this week or next week, um, but I'll get working on that soon. Maybe I'll have that other sweater finished by next time because it's flying and I kind of want to have that done before a vacation to the beach because I'm thinking that would be really nice because it's really light and I can wear it down at the beach. Even if it is warm, I can like wear it because I'm pasty white and I burn like crazy. Even when I put sunscreen on, I can, I can lather up and I still turn like, I just still turn red like a lobster. So it's fine. Okay. So those are the things that I'm wanting to do, but I thought I'd show you a little look into my knitting notebook. So this is my knitting notebook. I've got some stickers on there. I've got some stickers on the back. As I accumulate ones that I like that kind of ish match with what I'm going for, I stick them on here. So the back is kind of Pacific Northwesterny. We've got our little rain gnome from, oh boy, Simply Serving HK. And then we have Shelly Can Knits. Um, and then the front is just my black and white ones inside oh my gosh i love this one this is probably my favorite it's america's ass yes um and then we have a film by kirk from a sticker from my sister um so yeah anyways in my knitting notebook i take notes when i'm like writing patterns or i'm like just one offing something so like here i've got some mittens for my brother and i needed to figure out the fingers um, and then, I don't know, I just got like some random stuff, like a sweater and it for my son. I wrote down some basic things like needle size and stuff like that. So later on, if I need to look back, I can just have those. And then sweaters that I like 
am knitting that I don't print out the patterns for because I don't usually print patterns. I put my patterns in my, um, my OneDrive. I use them in there and then I make notes in here. So if I change my needle size, I'll write it in here and all those things. But then I also have in the back my projects. So I don't really use Ravelry very much. Um, like I use it to browse patterns. I like patterns and I have folders of all the different patterns that I like. Um, but then that's kind of the extent of it. I have put on some projects on Ravelry, um, especially if like there are test knits so like this, I put in there and then I'll put my Antuva in there. And there's been some of my patterns that I put in there. Um, so yeah, I don't really use it, but I do have all of my patterns listed here. So I've got all my 20, 22 makes and then like I write down the pattern that I used, um, the yarn I used, who it is for, when I started it, and when I finished it. So all these are the patterns that I have done this year. Now some of them, to be fair, I started in 2021. Like I have a couple of sweaters that I had started in that year that I finished this year, so yeah. And then I have some long-term ones like I have on here a spot for granny squares and then I just keep track of how many granny squares I've crocheted this year so like this year I've done 11 granny squares and then I have a similar thing for dishcloths I have um how many dishcloths I'll just check mark them so so far I've done two this year um but I have started a second page <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's how many projects I've been working on. Like, that's craziness. Let's actually, hold on. Let's count them, shall we? Okay, I have 26 patterns that I've finished. However, two of them have been frogged. I've, got, I've, I've knit quite a bit this year. I feel pretty accomplished that I have two full pages worth of knitting that I have finished and then I have started on a third page. That's crazy, that's crazy. Guys, I'm feeling a little chatty today. I feel like I'm going longer than I usually do. Hope you guys don't mind. I mean, if you do mind, you can just leave, right? Um, so I have some art to share with you. So here are some of my paintings I've done recently. Um, some of these were for my um, seaside collection that I released on my website. I don't have the prints available anymore, but I do have some of the markers. So this was Beach Umbrella. Then we have Floral Shores. So these, normally my paintings don't have names, but the ones that I have released for the seaside collection, all of them have names because then they had stitch markers to go with. And then also for the seaside collection, I have these two. This was Stormy Sunset. And this was Tropical Waters. Then we had Rocky Shoreline. And then this one was not part of it, but this is just another painting I finished that I can't remember if I shared or not. You have some daisies. Then a blank page. I haven't decided what to put on the other page yet. I can't remember if I shared these ones or not, but I'm just gonna share them anyways because I love them so much. Um, we have this really pretty dewy morning in fall. And then these morel mushrooms, which I adore. So cute. Okay, so this page I'm really excited about. I kind of, I've always wanted to do a space like theme for something. Like, cause I really like outer space and things really cool, but I also have this low key obsession with astronauts. Like not like, I'm not like, oh, I wanna know all about astronauts. Like I just like astronauts and art and photography. Like I think it's really cool. So I, I've, yeah, I've got, I've started doing some different space and sky art. So this side, I've got just some northern lights, the mountain, really pretty. And then on this side, I've got a little astronaut dude hanging out in a field, staring up at the stars. This is probably my favorite, like, dual page in my notebook. Like, it's so good. I am so in love with it. The colors are fabulous. I don't usually go for like pinks and purples and stuff, but these colors are just, ow, they're popping off the page. So yeah, 
I'm in love with those. I want to do something with them. I, yeah, I want to do something with them. Do you guys like space too? Or am I the only crazy person? Because I really like that. It makes me so happy. Okay, y'all. That is all the things I've been working on. There hasn't been a whole lot of exciting things in life. Uh, just, it's been gross and rainy and we finally got sun. So we've been hanging outside, uh, yard work, you know, all the fun things that come with nice weather. You finally have to catch up on all the things that you need to do outside. Um, I don't know guys, my life is kind of boring. I'm reading a book that I've had for like two years I've been working on. This summer, we'll like in July, end of July, we'll start my third year of reading this book. Um, so I'm trying to finish it before we hit that three year mark because that's a little ridiculous. I love reading, I used to eat books up. Like nobody else I used to be able to finish books in like a day or two. But since having kids, it's really slowed down for me, even to like just not reading books. So I've been reading this book for a while now. I'm almost done. It's the most recent Hunger Games book about um, future President Snow. It's really good. There's no reason for me to be taking this long to read it. Um, and my husband's like, you forget everything between reading it. And actually I don't. I, every time I pick it up, like once I start, it like takes me a half of a page and then I everything else comes back to me and I'm like, I know where we are. It's all good. So I just, I'm trying to power through it. I literally have like maybe 30, 40 more pages to go. So I don't really have that much further to go. And I'm a pretty quick reader. Once I get going, it just, I just get busy and then, you know, it's fine, whatever. So I'm reading a book and then I kind of want to finish that because I actually do want to start another book before we go on vacation because I really like reading on the beach. It's one of my favorite things, so I want to have a book, which is a different book from the same book that I've read in the last two years at the beach. It's fine. And then what are we watching? We're watching Alone, which is like a bunch of people get thrown out into the wilderness and they have to survive by themselves. Hence the name Alone. <laughs> It's really good. It's an easy show to watch and kind of have on the background and something that kids can watch with us too. Um, and then we're also finishing up Brooklyn Nine-Nine. We use, we watched that show live like every week we would watch it as it aired. Um, but then we just traveled off for some reason. We watched up until the second to last episode of the second to last season. And we didn't watch that season finale and then we never watched the last season so we're finishing up with that we are right where we left off last time so we're going to tonight we're going to start that episode and from here on it's all new and i'm very excited to do that um and then after that i think this weekend stranger things has the last two episodes which oh my lord i don't even know you guys I like the show. I love the characters. The story writing is incredible, but I, it's too stressful. So I get a ton of knitting done when I'm watching that because I just, I knit faster when I'm stressed. So yeah, I get tons of knitting. Plus I can't like, there's certain things that happen in that show that I can't watch the screen. I can listen to it, but I can't watch it because I'm a, my poor, my poor, my brain is very sensitive and I end up with nightmares. It's very irritating, but whatever. I want to be that strong person who's like, ah, I can watch all the scary things, but no, no, I can't do it. It's too scary. Anyways, that's it. I could ramble on forever about absolutely nothing, but I'm not going to do that to you. That would just be terrible. So anyways, thank you so much for watching, liking and subscribing and hanging out with me. And we will see you guys next time. Bye.